One of the things I'm asked about the most in regards to jazz guitar gear is jazz guitar amplifiers. So in this video I'm going to share with you the amps that I use, the ones that I recommend, which will hopefully inform you of a purchase if you're looking at basically buying a jazz guitar amplifier. Let's get into the video. Hey everyone, Jamie Holroyd here helping you learn jazz guitar. If you're new to jazz guitar and you want a structured free course that helps you get started then please check out my free beginner jazz guitar course which is linked and listed in the description below. At the time of recording this video I only actually own three guitar amps. I'm kind of going through a phase where I'm not massively into amps at the minute. Last year I bought and sold quite a few amps but now I'm just quite content with what I've got so I'm not really actively seeking out any amps so these are just the three that I use quite regularly. So let's get into the first one. Okay, so the first amp that I'd like to talk about is my Roland 20 GX that you can see on screen here. So this amp has actually been discontinued at the time of recording. This is the only one that's still in production. It's basically the 10 GX that you can buy new. And the problem with that is that the 10 GX is a little bit smaller than this. And I'm not sure if you could really use that at jams or gigs really. It's a little bit too quiet. Uh, that one, but this one is perfectly fine to use or jam sessions, gigs, anything like that. It's pretty loud for the size speaker which is in it and the sound on this one is really nice as well. It's got a super nice clean sound um, on the sound which I really like using for jazz guitar. It sounds really nice with the Telecaster and um, pretty much any guitar that I've got sounds good through this so it's kind of good in that regards. It's got kind of all the built-in effects and stuff, which I don't really tend to use for jazz. And the built-in effects, like you get with most of these amps, are kind of, um, they're okay, you know, and that's about as far as I'll go. I'm not gonna say that you're gonna get uh, the best overdrive or the best distortion ever, but they're perfectly usable for the general guitar teaching that I do. But the main thing that I like about this is the, the clean sound, which is very clean, very transparent. The reverb's very good as well. Um, some of the other amps I'm gonna show you don't actually have as good a reverb as what this does. And given the price point of this particular amp, I think it's really nice when you get a cheap amp which has got good reverb, and then some of the more expensive amps have kind of like bad reverb. So it's, yeah, it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, in regards to the settings on this, um, what I've learned from a friend of mine is to basically on solid state amps is to kind of keep the EQ low. Hopefully you can see that if I hold it up to to screen there, so kind of uh, the bass, mid and high, I keep all those fairly low because the thing with sterile amps, or solid state amps, sorry, is that they can sound sterile or boomy, um, especially if you've got the treble high, they can sound a little bit harsh, and if you've got the bass high, they can sound boomy. So I generally like to keep things low and find that I get the best results that way. So what don't I like about this amp? Well, the only thing is it can sometimes sound a little bit thin when you hear it against some of the other amps on this list really it's kind of clear and transparent but with that there seems to be a little bit of a sacrifice of thickness but that just could be that it's such a small speaker and such a small amp really um, and the other amps on this list are kind of you know bigger and, and things like that so that's that's one thing there's always going to be a trade-off right it's light it's portable so whenever you get an amp that's light you're always going to have some trade-off on sound if you compare this to like you know, a, a twin or something like that, then it's never gonna sound, you know, as big as a twin, but equally, um, it's a much more usable amp than a twin in many ways. And if you're just playing in a small room like this or recording in a small room, then it really works great. So this is kind of the amp that I basically had set up for a long time. I got this last year. And um, because I still do a little bit of general guitar teaching, this tends to be the one that kind of stays out because it's so versatile and like I said my jazz guitars sound good for it as well as my Fenders. The next amp that I'd like to share with you is my Polytone Mega Brute that you can see here. So um, regular viewers of this channel will have definitely heard Mega Brutes on most of my videos um, over the last 10 years because it's an amp that I've had in my collection for quite a long time. So I'll just kind of hold it up so you can see the EQ there as well just in case anybody's interested on how I kind of use these amps. Um, basically, I got started on this. I got um, an older one, which was not as clean as this one. This is super clean. These are really hard to find, I found, uh, and especially in clean condition 
like this. So if you kind of are interested in polytone amps, then let me know, because I have quite a lot of friends that actually have them and we buy, sell and trade them. So if you're interested in buying a polytone amp, um, either this one or the other one, which I'll show you, then drop me an email and I might have one or two for sale at any given time. But yeah, this, this for me is kind of a real workhorse amp. This just sounds so good, so fat and so full. It's only got an eight inch speaker in. And like I was just saying about the cube, there's always a trade-off when you've got a smaller speaker. But it doesn't have sound good. It really sounds thick, fat and warm. And certain guitars that I've got just excel through this and they sound better through this than what they do through the cube really. So this is all you know preferential and it all depends on how you play it. But whenever I play like a jazz guitar, they, they sound pretty good through the cube. They've got that kind of open clear sound. But when I play something like my Yamaha A1200 or my Guild X170 through this, then this is just kind of a jazz machine, you know. It really is a match made in heaven for kind of um, jazz guitars, in my opinion. Whereas the Cube, um, generally speaking, I do prefer the sound of Fenders through the Cube. I like that clarity that you get. Um, and like I keep saying, there always, they always seems to be a sacrifice between clarity and warmth. It's like if you compare a Fender amp to kind of a jazz amp or something like that, that any kind of jazz amp like a Polytone or a Henriksen, you get warmth, but you also arguably lose some clarity as well. So yeah, this is the Mega Brew that I like. Um, there's basically an overdrive channel on this one, um, which is completely redundant to me. Um, anybody that's ever used a Polytone before will know that the kind of overdrive or the distortion on these are completely useless, really. Uh, they, they do not sound good at all, um, unlike the Cube. And the reverb, it, it, it's okay at low settings. It's not like a spring reverb or anything like that. But generally speaking, um, I always tend to like to keep the reverb low, so that's not too problematic for me. Um, a good thing about a polytone amp as well is that they also sound good with bass guitars. I think even keyboards, you can get away with playing a, a keyboard into a polytone. I did a full video about the history of polytone for anybody that's interested, and that's probably the best way of kind of, um, you know, getting really um, familiar with the models and stuff if you're into them. But yeah, this is just showing you the mega brute that I have. I don't use this as often as what I should, but I just like having it because it's a, uh, it's so rare, especially in this condition, to get one like this. And the later ones that are blue, which have the sonic circuit, um, I don't think they sound quite as good. They, they've got more knobs and you know more kinds of distortions. So I guess this one, I've never looked at the, the serial or the date or anything like that, but I'd probably say that this is from the 90s or the 2000s. It's got a handle as well, so you know you can carry it kind of sideways on like that. I guess you could even use it sideways too. Um, it is heavier than the Cube. It's not heavy per se, but it's certainly weightier than the Cube. Um, I think it's probably a little bit louder though. Um, that's one thing to know about these. The famous story that I always like to tell with my old polytone is that my old Mega Brew is that I was basically playing a gig with a loud drummer. I took a Pro Junior, a Fender Pro Junior to that gig and that amp kept distorting and luckily a friend of mine let me borrow his uh, Mega Brute, not this exact one, but one that well, it could have been this because <laughs> it could have been his for all I know. But um, yeah, I used the Mega Brute and uh, this stayed much cleaner than what the Fender amp did. So yeah, I mean, obviously the benefit, or the, the disadvantage of this is that, you know, if you have it too loud, you really don't want to work an eight inch speaker that much because when you push a smaller amp to its limits and you turn it up too loud, then they never sound that good anyway. The third and final amp on this list is certainly my biggest amp and the heaviest, as you could probably hear me struggle because I haven't worked out in forever lifting it up. This is a Mini Brute 2 and this is the biggest amp that I've got. It's got a 12 inch speaker and the thing that I like about this, as you can see there, is how simple that is. Look at that, that's just a couple of knobs. It's technically got two channels, um, but I only use one of them really. This is an 80s Mini Brute 2. So, what I like about this amp is it really kind of reflects the, the speaker that's in it. It's got a big sound and this is kind of from the older generation of polytones. So the one that I just showed you, the Mega Brute, as I suspect it's probably from the 90s or early 2000s, but this one is definitely from maybe the mid to late 80s or something like that. I think it's kind of the last version of what I consider to be the older polytones that just had a single channel. I could be wrong with that, but I'm Pretty sure that's the case. Um, they changed their branding as well, as you can see, just the P. Um, I think before that they had a, a different logo and stuff, so that kind of is one thing that gives it away. 
So yeah, this, this is a really great amp. It sounds like the Mega Brute, you can use it with a uh, bass guitar or a piano, um, keyboard even. What's confusing, I think, with polytones is the terminology because um, this is called a Mini Brute and then the smaller one, which I just had, is called a Mega Brute. So in my mind, you know, the Mega Brute would be kind of, you would think the Mini Brute would be the smaller one, but that's just kind of polytone branding for you. Um, and just to confuse you even more, the Mega Brute that I just had, it did come in a version which had this kind of branding and that was called the, it was either the Teeny Brute or the Baby Brute. I think it's the Teeny Brute might have been the one. Um, so there you go. But obviously that, those do sound really good too, but they're not quite as loud as my Mega Brute. You often find that with older amps, especially solid state ones, that they're not quite as loud from the 70s and 80s as you know some of the modern ones. They really got more vol volume for the weight, which is why I like the, uh, the Cube so much because it's super light and it's pretty loud given how heavy it actually is, which is not very. So yeah, this is the Mini Brute 2. For me, this is just kind of like, you know, it's such a great sound. I, I kind of like the other amps. And then I pick up and play this one and everything just sounds so fat and so warm through these. So these are cracking amps to get and they're not too expensive for what they are. Obviously, these are kind of dedicated jazz amps, so they're quite niche in comparison to, say, a Fender amp. Um, so generally speaking, they don't go for massive amounts of cash, probably, um, give or take the same price as something like a Fender Blues Junior. But as I said, if you're ever interested in polytone amps, feel free to drop me an email because I usually have a few floating around and loads of my friends and students here around Leeds certainly have some as well which they might trade or sell. So uh, drop me an email if you're interested. So that concludes the tour of my physical jazz amps. But one thing that I'm actually asked about quite a lot is the amp sims that I use on certain videos. People are kind of curious about that. So. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, the amp sims that I use all come from a free program on Mac called GarageBand. And, you know, to be honest with you, I, I think the sounds are okay sometimes. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think they're, they're absolutely the best tones you can get, which is why I'm always um, a little bit conscious about kind of recommending it. But the one thing that doesn't stop me from recommending it is knowing that GarageBand is free. So if you've got a Mac, then you can basically start using the sounds straight away. Some people may then think, okay, well, if you've got all those nice jazz amps, why do you, and obviously some of you may know that I've got this condenser mic right here, which is basically just, um, it's only, what is it now? It's an AKG P120 or something like that. Not super expensive. As you can see, basically for micing those amps up, um, I have this, I think this is meant to be a desktop mic stand to be fair. So this is a desk right here. So I'm meant to use it like this, but um, I just use it as an amp stand because it kind of takes up less space and I'm all about saving space in a small room like this. So yeah, what people often ask me about is basically, why do I um, use amp sims and stuff if I've got you know nice amps and a nice microphone? Well, no matter how good my micing techniques are, they're never as clean as kind of plugging a guitar directly into an interface or a mixer. Whenever you do that, then it's a super clean signal. So from what I understand about recording guitar amps, if I were to get anywhere near the same quality um, or cleanness of recording, I would basically have to put the amp in maybe a cupboard or a spare room, make sure that room was treated, you know, all that kind of stuff. Quite complicated, quite faffy, at least for, you know, my level of desire to do something like that. Um, so that's basically why I use amp sims. Um, another reason is that, say, if I'm playing along to a backing track or something like that, if I was to mic up the amp, I would have to use, like, headphones so I could hear the backing track so the microphone doesn't pick up the audio from the speakers or the monitors, uh, which, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world, but for me, I'd much rather just kind of, you know, I, I'm, with, with glasses, I'm not a massive fan of wearing headphones anyway, so I just kind of prefer to plug in and record that way. And of course, once you record using an, an audio interface, then you can always EQ the sound, you can always change it a little bit, which I guess you can do with amps, but you've always got complete control when you plug that in. You can just get the playing done, and then if you listen back and you wanna change the sound or add some reverb or the EQ or anything like that, it's much easier to do when you just kind of record the guitar using an interface in my opinion. So that, that's just where I'm at right now, but I'll switch over to the computer and show you the kind of garage band amps that I use. And like I said, you know, 
these are okay for free and um, certainly in the future if I could ever figure out some things like amp bias or if I've ever got, this, ever got the time to figure out that kind of stuff, more amp sims which are paid. I, I, they do seem worth it from what I've heard so it wouldn't surprise me if I was kind of using some of those at a later date. Okay, so now you can see GarageBand, this is what I use as my door. I'm sure there are better alternatives, but this is just what I use and lots of people ask me about these amp settings. So I guess I kind of go between a few different amps and what I tend to do just to give you a quick tutorial is basically, I guess I like this cool jazz combo one sometimes, but what I spend a lot of time messing around with is this amp designer here. Um, I spend a lot of time changing the mics, changing the cabinet and changing the amp itself and when I've done that I usually just kind of play something and I'll kind of mess around with this I'll record something uh, play it back and I'll keep changing this until I get something that that I'm happy with so that's what I tend to do with that so the other ones that I sometimes use are this Britain Clean I've used that um, quite a few people like the sounds that I've recorded with that one once again I've I always change this and this and you know I mess around with the reverb and stuff. I think those are the main two that I use in regards to a clean sound. I might have done something with chicken picking but I don't think it was jazz. So usually just Brit and clean and then the other one which I just mentioned was the cool jazz combo and like I said I really mess around with the amp designer quite a bit. So that's the thing I've found with GarageBand on a general point is that say like you've got all these kind of distortion sounds there's like one of them that's usable that <laughs> there's quite a lot of you know so so sounds but you know it is where it is it's a free program if uh, i think the delay and the reverb is all good uh, and it's very very simple the, the biggest thing to consider with any amp is that you get a lot of the sound from your fingers really that's that's the, the main point Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and informative. Thank you as always to my wonderful Patreons that make these videos possible. If you want to help support the videos then please check out my Patreon page which is linked and listed below to help guarantee these videos keep getting made. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.